I've brought you some presents because it's Christmas. Oh, I hope you don't mind. God. You should. Isn't that I, sweet? No, of it you is to sweet. Come? No, I've yes. brought a couple of bits. I've brought. Firstly, I've brought James. I've brought you a pair of glasses. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> oh, a little suit, James. That is, that is really nice. Nice. Presents. Man, you pitched that just right, Joe. That is. Hey. That is really sweet. I brought you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> This is not the normal I've, way round. I've brought you another jacket. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I've just seen what's That's on it. That's too small for me. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. does that mean? I've brought you a cock jacket. <laughs> An Audi jacket. Look at that, ladies and, and gentlemen. And I've brought some T-shirt. And I've brought you a... <laughs> and I've brought you a hat. To so did many you games. Get rock stars you bring us Christmas presents. Please put it on. Please oh, put it on. Of course I'll Did you knit that, Jay? Oh, no, keep it warm. Stop your wife getting... <laughs> that is style, eh? Hey? Yeah. Did you knit that yourself? Yeah, it fits it. It fits me perfectly. Perfect. Perfect. And, <laughs> and with that... And with that... Thank you so much for our gifts. <laughs> You've taken over. It's I a pleasure. So what I'm really that looks good on you. What yeah, I'm looking great. forward to okay, is okay, Brian okay, tonight editing this. Yeah, that's what he's saying. Because he came on with now. a bag. He's sobbing. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you have made my Christmas. Hopefully, with that, we've Thank made you. yours. Thank Ladies you very and gentlemen, much. The fastest man around. Thank after. you very much. Thank you. Nobody else hosts a ward like this. Yeah. It's the best face pulled whilst in the passenger seat of the year. OK, nominations are Madison Welsh while riding with James May. Or how long we've taken so far. That's where you can use the two stopwatches, so you can say for ten minutes we've been doing 80. Mountains! <laughs> a dog while riding with James May. Of course, the IQ is a little bit like a small city supercar. Thanks for that. Oh, you've got gum on the gear stick. <laughs> and James May while riding with Ken Block. <laughs> it's good work, that. It was good work. And the winner, it's none of those. It's our old mate, Tiffany Dell, while riding with John Barrowman. Wow! <laughs> But I am not the only nominee, am I? No. 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 Because, you see, Richard Hammond lives in the middle of nowhere and has recently started using a helicopter to get him home after our film shoots. Now, this can be a bit of a problem when time is tight and uh, we need to get everything in the can, OK, before we lose the light. Uh, and coming up now is an example, one example, of the problem we face. Assuming we can get the exhaust pipe fixed back on again, mm. I think we're ready. I'm gonna have to wait. Sorry, I'm sorry. Right in the middle of the film, you. The auto. Hammond's hey. lift has arrived. How are you going home tonight, James? I thought I'd go in a car. Yeah, I'm going in a car. What are you doing though? Because we used home? to present a car show, do you remember? Called yeah. Top Gear. Now, um, it, is, it is time now for our Patience in the Workplace Award. The first nomination goes to Jeremy for keeping reasonably cool whilst the Range Rover filming car got into the back of shot. John Dot Foster BBC Radio Tees. Oh, God, get one. Move the car. <laughs> Come on. We really do need these radio reports. Lovely Range Rover in the back of the shop. Yeah. I gather you're up here uh, with the guys from Top Gear. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, uh, they're called James and Jeremy. Here we go. They work alongside me. I'm Top Gear. And yeah, I'm in there. Yeah. Thank you. Good Good night. Night. Yeah, really, really. You see, the thing is, camera cars driving into the back of shot aren't the big bugbear on Top Gear. No, that is walkie-talkies. You see, we all have to have them in the car and they have to be switched on so that the director can warn us of impending disasters that lie ahead. 
Sometimes, though, in fact, quite often, the director just uses these walkie-talkies for chatting, which can be quite a nuisance when you're trying to do piece to cameras. I am a driving dog! One day I will get a piece to camera in without someone talking on a radio. One day. Now, here's a taste of reality, wherever you are in the world. Beautiful winding road, trees either side. Stay off the radio. I've just worked out what it is I don't quite like about Hammond's Ferrari. It's quite good looking and it is growing on me. Stay off the radio, stay off the radio. It's doing exactly what it's built to do. Drive, look brilliant. I am a driving... Shut up! With the Capri, Ford did what it's always been able to do really well, taking a very aspirational idea, two-door coupe, big bonnet, and made it available no, to the people. Yeah, so yeah, off. Uh -huh. well nice. But the winner, the winner of the award for quiet fortitude and patience in the face of constant walkie-talkie interruptions is Richard Hammond for this. Actually, Blasting through a nighttime alpine road with the yeah, roof off. No get off the f***ing radio! Well done. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's a proud moment. OK, now it's time for the Top Gear Awards. Becoming a bit of a tradition, this. We've done it twice. Uh, and uh, really, we're going to recognise the best and the worst from 2004, kicking off with this. Welcome to the Top Gear Comedy Handling Awards 2004. Our short list of finalists has been whittled down to three. And the Stig will be driving them in a minute. In the meantime, your hosts, me and James. <laughs> Now, for the purposes of this very scientific test, we're going to use the hammerhead on our test track. Here's a very rough representation of it. Our expert driver is going to enter here like this. Now, we've got comedy handling cars here. A number of things may happen. We could have a bit of understeer. The car might go straight ahead when it should go around a bend. We could have understeer here. We could have lift-off oversteer so that a car tries to spin. We could have cars running wide here, killing the cameraman. Who knows? Let's find out. <laughs> Just before we start, though, here's a Lotus Exige to show you how good cornering should be done. Here it comes into the hammerhead. And here it is, staying nice and tight between the lines, and it changes direction beautifully. Right, that's the bar set. Let's smash straight into it. And now, at number three, it's the Toyota Prius that Jeremy tested early. Now remember, it should stay within the white lo- oh dear. That's spectacularly bad. It's not going right at all. <laughs> the green car then, not doing very well. The problem here, we reckon, are its special eco-friendly tyres, which actually have very little grip. <laughs> that was a good comedy car. Now, at number two, it's the Malaysian entry, the Perodua Canari. Tall, boxy and with skinny tyres, this shows great promise for hopeless handling. We're not, I'm not expecting much. No, it's going to be like cornering, I don't know, an office chair. Oh, the that doesn't feel brilliant. <laughs> oh, oh, it's oh, it's oh, oversteering! Oh, 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 we love it! Yes, we can! Yes! That wasn't handling at all, that was just No, that just was just mayhem. chaos. Fantastic! Oversteer and understeer all in one small package here. Now, can anything beat that? Well, yes, we think so, because it's time for the smart city car. Like the Canary, it's tall and skinny tired. And this is probably the bravest thing the Stig has ever done. Here we go. That's the left, here comes the right, and there... <laughs> it's complete... <laughs> well, it never even, it never even but tried it. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Now, let's see that again from the Stig's in-car camera. Look, he turns the wheel, and the car goes straight on. World-class understeer there. 
And so the award for the car that goes round a corner with the least dignity is the smart. <laughs> Now the surprise of the year. This is awarded to the car that was much, much better than we were expecting it to be. And the nominations are the Aerial Atom, which you'll be able to see in our Boxing Day show, the Ferrari 612, which we'll be featuring next week, and the Vauxhall Monaro. The Atom surprised us because it's so fast it can totally destroy your face. <laughs> The Vauxhall surprised us because it's a Vauxhall you'd actually want to buy. And the Ferrari surprised us because it's at least 2,000 times better than its looks would lead you to believe. And the winner is a big surprise. It's the Vauxhall Monaro! <laughs> Now, elsewhere in the world, awards are awarded to reward excellence. But here on the Top Gear Awards, we like to award an award that rewards a car that we found particularly unrewarding in, to, in 2004. This isn't quite right, it's I'm sorry. It's not brilliant, mate, no. no. <laughs> um, worst car of the year, It's basically. the worst car of the year, yeah. yes, yes, thank you. And here are the nominations. Yes, indeed. We've got the BMW X3 because it's a big four-wheel drive off-road car that doesn't work off-road. <laughs> or on-road, and it's ugly enough to make small children feel sick. <laughs> the City Rover, because Rover buys them from an Indian company for three and a half thousand pounds and then expects to sell them to you and me for almost twice that. And the Hyundai Accent, which is wretched whatever engine it has, but we were particularly depressed with the three-cylinder diesel version. It really is less fun than drowning. <laughs> and the winner clinched it by a mile, which it still took an hour to cover. The worst car of 2004 is the Hyundai Accent. <laughs> now, the best engine noise we heard on our track in 2004. We liked the sound of the Mercedes SLR. We liked the sound of the Porsche Carrera GT. But the winner is this. Does anyone want to guess what that is? It's a Ferrari straight away. Who said that? Well done you, sir. That was a Ferrari. It was. That was specifically the Ferrari 360 Challenge Stradale. Best engine sound of the year. OK, the next award is for Britain's biggest anorak, and it's him! <laughs> OK, we move on now to the Top Gear Clot of the Year Award. Uh, the winner will receive this prestigious golden cock. It's, uh, it's for the presenter that's made the biggest mess of things, and we'll kick off with James. Ah, yes, um, I think this will be the City Rover secret film. You may remember we weren't allowed to drive the City Rover, Rover wouldn't lend us one, so we went to a dealership, I was disguised with a camera hidden in my tie, I went in, I filmed it, I came out and I said that to the director, that is going to be brilliant. Here's what we saw. Here's me going in. And that's what I filmed with my tie. It's <laughs> the ceiling. So this is the City Rover. <laughs> no, it was a fluorescent light. You can stop laughing. Why don't you tell them what you did? Yeah, well, no, you see, I turned up to film a car in the usual way, and the director said, hello, good morning, have you got everything? And checked, have you got the right clothes? Yes, I've, I've got those. Have you got uh, the script? Yes, I've got that with me. And have you got your silly hair stuff? Oh, yes, right, uh, where's the car? Ah, forgot that. <laughs> hadn't, <laughs> hadn't brought the car and we were left it at home in Gloucestershire. Poor. Yes, very Sorry. poor indeed, but yeah. I fear... I fear mine may be worse, because uh, you may have seen the Land Rover Discovery film recently, drove it to the top of a mountain in Scotland. Uh, we used a helicopter to get the last couple of shots, and I said to the pilot, look, I've really got to get home tonight, can you fly me to Glasgow Airport? Uh, and I said to the director and the crew, can you drive the car back down the mountain? No problem, got in the helicopter, fell asleep, woke up an hour later. Of course, I did give them the keys. <laughs> no, <laughs> So, really, if you want to land over Discovery, there's one at the top of a mountain in Scotland <laughs> being guarded by five skeletons. Now, um, this is an audience uh, decision here, so hands up everyone who thinks James should win for his lousy camera work. Anyone? There's one, there's a handful there, and Thanks. Richard for forgetting to take a car to a shoot. Wasn't hands up brilliant. there. I think I can see which oh, way dear. this is going to go. <laughs> who thinks it's Jeremy? I am.
am the golden cock. Right. Yes, he um, is. OK, the next award is... The All Things Considered Award. The award for the car that covers all the bases. Speed, style, economy, comfort, price, safety, the lot. In other words, this is the award for the best car of 2004. And the nominations are... The Jaguar S-Type Diesel. It's peaceful, it's comfortable, it's economical, and yet in the hands of a German bird, it'll get round the Nürburgring in 9 minutes and 12 seconds. The VW Golf GTI. It looks good everywhere it goes. It's practical and it goes like stink. It is all things to all men. And then there's the Subaru Legacy Spec B. We like the looks and the quality and the way they've shoehorned bits of the Impreza rally car into this impressive all-round family bus. And so, the winner, the Top Gear Car of the Year for 2004 is the VW Golf GTI. But, 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 that is not the end of proceedings, because while the Golf is a very worthy car, it wasn't our favourite car from 2004. No, that's why we decided to have a new award for the car which money no object we would most like to own. These are the nominations. The Ferrari Enzo. It came here and in the hands of our stick, it just blitzed our track. It is easily the fastest supercar and that, surely, is the point of supercars. Then there was the Aston Martin DB9, which was certainly the best looking car of 2004 and probably the best looking car from all of time. But it's also icy cool and as quick as hell. And then, at the other end of the scale, we have the new Land Rover Discovery, which, as we proved when we took it to Scotland, really can climb every mountain and ford every stream. But there can only be one winner, and it is... The Aston Martin DB9! That's our favourite car! Earlier this year, the Discovery beat a mountain, but in our race from Guildford to Monte Carlo in the last series, the Aston beat a 200-mile-an-hour train. It is utterly fabulous in every way.